Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and this week I'm going to pull one out of my stash here, and uh, I haven't had this one very long, a uh, few years now, but it's uh, one that really brings me back to my early days of modeling, and how many of you guys have kits like that that you remember building early on and just fond memories, and for whatever reason, those stick in your head. This is one of those for me, uh, just, just one of those kits, and and my favorite thing was the metal glow plastic. Um, and that, that was the main thing. And there wasn't a whole lot that you had to do to it to build it and paint it. It wasn't that difficult to build. And uh, so this is one of those for me. And I just uh, adore these kits from, from Monogram or Ravel from that time period. And mainly because they were easy to build compared to the AMT and MPC kits that were around back then. They were older tools and most of them were molded in gray. Uh, and they were just a lot harder to build for somebody with uh, very little modeling skills, such as myself at the time. But, um, you know, when this kit came out, it's hard to believe it was 40 years ago, 1983. And um, this one's the earliest version. Uh, even has the turtle wax in there, which is pretty cool. Uh, my, my original kit didn't. But uh, you see the Challenger TA here. And then more about the car and then the copyright date of 1983. And everything about it. So this ended up being a kit that was uh, pretty pretty sealed inside that I'd ran across and it was cheap and I just uh, had a flashback and I had to buy it even though I built a number of these. Mine was the issue, I'll throw some box arts up. Uh, just a few years later, it was still molded in, in uh, the Metal Glow Red, but it had the custom parts as well so you could build it two in one. This is the very first issue, 83, that has the turtle wax in it. And then they had another issue without the turtle wax. This is the first one I'd actually seen physically with the wax in it, um, which is one of the other reasons why I grabbed it, because I'm like, is it really in there? So uh, we'll, we'll get in here and start digging into it. Like I said, it was kind of sealed, but I did open it up. Um, really simple, easy to deal with chrome tree here. Nice deep wheels. Um, not much to do with the chrome valve covers. Uh, the shifter and the alternator. You know, and these valve covers on the real car shouldn't be chrome, but it's kind of cool. I know I left them chrome on their on the model when I built the original one, but uh, their, their 340 in the real car isn't chrome. And of course, uh, the one piece glass, which back then was easy to deal with. It's got the cowl molded into it. Um, and you, you can use that to foil it. I've done that and here's the headlights here. And of course the taillight molded in clear also. And I remember just painting it red and then uh, white in the middle. I didn't use uh, the regular stoplight red. I just used a regular red and regular white. You know, it was my first build and or one of my earliest builds. I still remember one of my first ones, but no, I never really got into it uh, or went looking for another one. Here's the tires. I don't think these are the correct tires for this kit because they should have the molded on letters. I think this was swapped in from a later kit. Um, but I know mine had the tires with the lettering on it that is shown on the box. But like I said, this was kind of opened. And of course, the directions here. And then the really old decals that at this point may not even be usable. Not really sure. But I remember these being pretty easy to apply. Pretty simple, especially if you put them right on the, the red like I did, the red plastic. And of course, fairly simple, easy directions to follow. You know, when you're um, 9 or 10, which is about the age I did this at, I think it was 10 or 11 um, when I built it. I had done a few and had brush painted a couple of them, but uh, this was one that I, I just remember really enjoying. Oh, and here is that... Uh, Turtle wax for polishing the plastic to really make it show. Turtle wax and monogram logo on there. Don't know if this is still good. It still feels like it's still in there. And may you know may still be good. It's still sealed. But that's one of the reasons I, you know, I kind of hold on to this kit. It's more for the nostalgic value. But uh, let's uh, where's the? Oh wow, I still have not opened this kit. Okay, well I guess I'm gonna open it. But here's that metal glow plastic body. Now I know now as a modeler, it's got some scratches on it and the swirls in it. Um, don't really like the swirls. This might be a little hard to paint and primer over, but you know, 
as a nine-year-old, this was freaking cool. Um, just just loved it and made it real easy to work on. You, know, you put the spoiler on it and you know, paint it. But the, the main body, you didn't have to paint. And back then, I was just spray painting, you know, if, if I did paint at all. Most of them I did, and it was all pretty much brush paints. Looks like the exhaust has fallen free. Pretty simple, easy to use exhaust. Um, always thought this was really cool, side exit exhaust. But, you know, when I built this, I didn't know what this car was. I didn't know what a Challenger TA was. I didn't know anything. It was just basically... I picked it by how it looked racy and cool on the box art. And that's just what I was going by. Um, was not much into the actual history of the cars or anything. I was just uh, growing up as a car person. I loved playing with them, helping my dad, but didn't know much about the actual cars like I, I do now as far as getting into the history and stuff. But here's that interior tub, the bucket seats, a booster, one of the exhaust manifolds, the mirrors, you know. The pretty easy to assemble front end, you know, not the greatest as far as detail goes, but it's not, it's not a horrible kit. It, you know, I like this kit. It's not perfect, but there's a nice chassis pan with nothing uh, really molded into it. So it made it really easy to detail. Separate door panels. Here's the 340 engine, the cylinder heads, radiator fan, uh, steering wheel, the rear tail panel. Which this being this way made it really easy to brush paint just this black section right here. And then here's some of the rest of the stuff. But you got your hood, your TA hood with the TA scoop. The three two barrel carburetors for the 346 pack air cleaner. The rest of the bucket seats, the dash, two piece dash, which you know made it still fairly easy to do. The eight and three quarter rear end and then a torsion bar front suspension. All pretty simple and easy to build, but it's all here. And, um, you know, you can detail that out pretty good, but still, you know, fairly simple kit, not overly detailed, doesn't have any shocks and some of the other little things that were missing, but still had other stuff. But, you know, again, as a 9, 10, 11 year old, didn't really care. Here's the TA rear spoiler, the intake manifold that had fallen off, and then the missing exhaust manifold. So there's all the parts that are in this one as far as the kit goes but just a, a fawn kit that i remember now this is not my original build this is one that i did more than 20 years ago i think 2001 one of the times it was reissued um it's been reissued a few times i think one of the last times was back in 2016 uh so it's been a while since it's been out but they still are easy to find and stumble upon but i built this one um this was, I think, shortly after I got back into the house. No, actually, I built this one before I moved out of my parents' house and into this house. But um, built this one a long time ago. So this is, I have pictures of this dating back to 2001. So I'm not really sure exactly when I built it. Um, but it was definitely the 99 kit box art as far as which one I bought. So it was between 1999 and 2001 when I actually built it. My original build was you know molded in red brush painted hood brush painted spoilers just pr pretty much brush painted uh, black the engine was brush painted orange and just whatever i needed to brush paint uh in a few colors so it really wasn't that detailed i remember the headlights were brush painted silver they weren't clear um i'm really not sure why i did that but i did that um and then brush painted the spoilers i remember that and then i had tore it apart and i had built this car with it because it was a much older build so i had used it for parts to build my uh aar cuda so that's where the chassis and the 340 engine for that uh, aar cuda that i did so i had robbed it for that and then the remainder i had put and made a hemi challenger out of it and it was in gray and i showed pictures of it. when i showed this model i showed pictures of it in gray and then i tore it apart and rebuilt it again so this has actually been built three times to get to this stage so this is what's left of my original one. So I'll put that off the side. I did a video of that. I have not done a video of this one. So, you know, Challenger being one of my favorite cars now, but back then when I built it, I didn't know. And then not to be confused with this kit, just so you know, this one is Ravel's 125th scale. That's a 124th scale. So this one 
well, you could still make the Challenger TA. This is 125th scale, and this was issued in, when was it, uh, 2008. But this is actually um, based on a die-cast car. So I'll open it up and we can compare the bodies a little bit. But um, I built the Vanishing Point die-cast car, but I haven't built this one since then. I bought the kit to build it as the Challenger. But yeah, you can definitely see the size difference. I think it builds up fairly nice. It's just a little flat-sided on the side there compared to this one, which, um, you know, whether or not that bothers you, that was one of the biggest complaints when this kit came out is the sides are very flat, almost like the modern Challenger versus the vintage Challenger. But yeah, you can definitely see it between these two. I always thought this one looked better, but I know some people don't like 124th scale. They'd rather have 125th scale. And this one's 125th scale. Um, but, you know, it's got some of its things from the die cast kit that make it uh, different as well. But I haven't built this one. It's in my stash. I do intend to build it someday. I uh, don't know when that day is going to come. You know how it is. It's nice to have it and you know that you're going to build it someday. But I figured I would kind of throw that in there as well because you can still find this kit. I'm not sure if it's been reissued since. It may have been. Um, but I've had that since new. And then this one, I don't know if I'll actually build this one every now and then i get tempted to do it just like i did just to clean up polish the uh red plastic and put the decals on it and paint the rest of it red but do uh, or not red paint all the black parts but leave the molded in in red color i've been tempted to do that but every now and then it's like i just uh, uh look at it and just have a really good flashback one of the other ones that's that way for me too, when it comes to flashback kits, I'm just gonna throw this in there real quick. This one, not the greatest kit, not not a very good kit, but this is another one that I built as a kid. I just remember buying it, gluing it, and this is the first one I remember actually getting brush paints and brush painting some of the, the trim and making it look pretty good. It was a total glue bomb, um, a real mess. Uh, lots of memories but i just remember being so proud of building it and being one of the first ones when i got my brush paints to actually brush paint it the ones before this kit that i had built were all just glued together no paint just glued together put the decals on so this is just another one that uh fond fond memories not the greatest kit but fond fond memories maybe i'll uh, go over that one someday but i just wanted to show you this one because it's just one of those ones that um you know, same thing, fond memories, loved it, had a good time with it, and it builds into a really good car. My skill levels weren't that great back then, but it wasn't horrible because I was able to repurpose a lot of the parts and eventually build it into this car. Um, so a lot of the parts remain in this one, but not all of them. Um, but that's that's ended up what ended up happening with it was I didn't have money to go out and buy another one of these, and I needed parts from it to build another project. So that's what I ended up doing was robbing those parts and building that car. But thank you for tuning in and subscribing and all your comments. I really appreciate it. And I would love to hear about kits that are like this for you. Don't always have to be, you know, vintage rare kits. Just just kits that uh, you just really enjoyed. And um, like I said, this is one of them for me. So thank you. And uh, you guys, you have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you next Saturday.